Hey everyone. Hi. Uh, I hope you can see me. Hi everyone. I'll say hi again. Uh, hi everyone. I hope you can see me and hear me very clearly. First and foremost, um, thank you so much for taking the time out. I it's always nice to interact uh, in a live format. Uh, so two three things that I will do. So I'll give a very quick ten minute run up to what is happening from a macro point of view, what is happening in the stocks domain, and what is happening in the crypto domain. But before that, you can see me and hear me clearly. just a very quick type in if you can okay uh not getting any answers very quickly okay thank you abhishek uh thank you okay brilliant 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 awesome okay so cool so we'll get started i will spend maybe like 10 minutes uh, explaining the entire scenario what is happening from a macro point of view and what is happening from a stock and crypto point of view i will give my view point and now this does not mean that you should be purchasing acting as per whatever i am saying please do your due diligence please consider my research as a data point uh, like any investor i can be wrong right so it's not as if that uh, you know whatever i am saying it is 100% correct or not 100% correct no one has 100% hit rate okay all right yeah, yeah i'll speak about crypto right so i mean i'm not avoiding the topic right so i'll i'll definitely speak about crypto uh, cool so let us get started and let me give you like a very quick commentary on what is happening from a macro view point so three things right so one is that there are monkey pox related concerns right and um, basically the commentary is not very good regarding the disease right and uh, people are fearing that hey uh, you know the because of monkey pox it will be a similar situation like what happened with covid situation and it will lead to a lot of bad stuff in the economy right and the markets are going to fall now can i definitely guarantee that markets are not going to fall uh, i don't know right but my view point is that this will not create massive panic and ma massive negativity right that's my view point of course i can be wrong now why am i saying it because markets fear uncertainty that is one of the key reasons so do Uh, which happened in 2008 crisis also because that was somewhat of a very newer crisis right same thing happened in 2000 crisis that it was a very new crisis it was probably the first time a startup bubble had burst uh, in 2000 so early 2000 that was a dot com bubble age 2008 again a very similar situation that financial banking crisis happened for the first time at a, such a massive scale um and 2020 again was a newer category of crisis that happened right so that was the view point now if monkey pox like situation happens that will it again be very similar to covid no right because the world has dealt with covid and they will they are ready to deal with another healthcare crisis so to say uh, so that is my view point the uncertainty is less okay so that's what i would say okay that's one second key point is uh, that on july 28th the us uh, us related data came right and us related recession data came and everyone is now saying that you know what us is in recession etc etc announcements will be made um, bad things are going to happen no okay i have been saying it for a while now that markets are forward looking they all the information that is there it gets absorbed and i think almost all of us who are there on this call Uh, we are smart enough to understand that at least the recession concerns have been absorbed into the stock markets okay so that is point number 2 right that uh, no major problem is going to happen the day recession is officially announced in the us okay so that is point number 2 point number 3 is uh, what we are right now seeing is a rally right so to say that and i have been telling all of you right and i have been investing quite heavily both in cryptos and in the stock market why cryptos this that see guys i mean everyone is entitled to their opinion i am not pushing you to go and invest in cryptos no one is uh, doing that um, you need to be sensible enough to respect other people's point of view also if i want to put my hard earned money in cryptos it's my view point right and i'll i'm entitled to doing it right if someone wants to put it in uh, in bonds they are entitled to do it it's completely fine having said this i say it over and over and over and over again that i have a lot of faith on cryptos but i do not put more than my portfolio is around 15 to 20% cryptos right that's what i was moving towards right so that is uh, what was happening right um so yeah so so that is the stage where i am at despite having a lot of faith in cryptos and the crypto economy uh, i only invest 15% 15 to 20 that is me right 
who studies the market uh, who learns a lot about the crypto market etc that does not mean that you should also have a 15 20% portfolio and i can't say anything about people who um, you know who invest 100% in cryptos that is something that i myself do not do so what can i say about that it's a it's a diversification asset class for me right so for example it's not as if that you know i i'm against real estate i invest in real estate also right so so that's the viewpoint that you need to think about it from a portfolio view Okay. I will come to cryptos uh, separately. I will talk about world etc. as well, right? I mean, uh, so please hold your horses. I'll, I'm going step by step. Okay, so yeah, so that's one, right? Uh, I hope this these three points are clear. Uh, okay, so just building on the third and final point about the rebound rally that is happening. Some are saying that hey, this is the bull trap. This is a bear trap. This that. So here is what I have to say on that. That see, guys, uh, the markets had already made made a peak of around eighteen thousand three hundred four hundred nifty ish around. Okay, uh, that is a point that we will reach sooner rather than later. Will we go straight to that point from seventeen thousand three hundred ish, right where we currently are, uh, to eighteen thousand three hundred ish? Maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, we don't know, but we are definitely going to hit eighteen thousand three hundred at some point. Okay, uh, yeah. So that's that's what I would say. Okay, so I hope that this point is clear that. Uh, Yeah, we are definitely getting there, and this has to do with the concept of price stickiness, right? So, price stickiness in simple terms means that, for example, think about it this way: that if iPhone right now, let's say a basic version of iPhone costs fifty thousand rupees, now do you think that that iPhone pie price is going to go down in the future on an average? The answer is no. Okay, so yeah, so that's the simple basic line. That is what the price stickiness means. Have you ever seen? Let me give you another example. That can you tell me a point where you pick Nifty on a three-year range period? Show me like one data point where it has fallen, right? I mean, you would always get an opportunity to book profits from that viewpoint. Okay, so that's what I would say. So I have been saying that it's a great time to invest. I had been investing on every fall, and now we are reaping rewards. Now, what you need to do is that at this stage, please do not buy overinflated assets. Okay, which brings me to the second section that I want to discuss very quickly today, which is about stocks and uh, four categories. I will discuss. One is banking stocks are already in a run up today as we speak. I have been saying it for a month now that hey banks very good please buy please buy please buy per se or at least not buy at least start doing more research right. So banks have given run up so to say right. HDFC Bank has been up. IDFC First has been up. Uh, Equitas has posted really good results. Small finance banks are doing well. Uh, going forward, I feel that the rally is going to continue in banking right. uh right okay so that's one uh, second key thing that uh, no so this is not wine this is not my, this is just a decorative item i don't drink anymore so second key point uh, the fmcg uh, has already given run up right for example hul itc all this stuff they have already given run up okay third key thing uh, next sectors could be auto pharma right um, which can give more run up now i'm not saying that please go and invest your money now uh, that is my assumption right fourth and finally metals i don't think that they are going to give run up uh, commodity cycles are fairly long commodity cycles have already given a breakout they are not going to give too much run up from this point within these segments when i say that hey uh, you know banks are in a run up it does not mean that every type of bank is going to give a run up right? it means that some banks from this point are overvalued some banks are undervalued you guys are smart enough to figure out which banks i am talking about and you can take a Uh, take a viewpoint accordingly, right? So that's what I would say. Now comes the third part, which is cryptos. Now, okay, so people who do not want to invest in cryptos, please do not invest in cryptos. No one is pushing you to invest in cryptos. I will speak about some recent developments. Ujjivan has also given an up, by the way, right? Um, okay, so uh, cryptos. Uh, number one, Ethereum merge uh, is going well, right? Uh, we will get more information. But if you check the last. one month performance ethereum is up by 50% okay um bitcoin is up by 30 35% i'll double check it once right that how much is bitcoin up by uh, da, da, da. it should be around 30% if i'm not mistaken in the last one 21 right so yeah bitcoin is up by 21% right in the last one month uh, this and just to tell you a little bit of history because there was a lot of negativity that was built on cryptos right so um and, and i'll explain you the entire uh, view point about that as well that there was a lot of negativity right that hey not crypto scam this that what not okay so uh, point one is that bitcoin had already crashed by 80% twice this was a third time that it was it, it was crashing right up 
almost up until that point okay so that was one okay um second key point is cryptos are a risky investment i don't know why this narrative is there that you know compare it with bonds no one is doing it if you are in, if you want to make 100% return on, on some asset you have to take risks right same is the viewpoint with zomato right for example i am bullish about zomato but i am not crazy person that i am going to an, invest equal amount of money that i am investing in hul into zomato right simply because of the viewpoint that zomato might be a 10x opportunity from that point so higher the risk higher the reward i am not saying that you should go and invest not invest but please think about it sensibly right from that viewpoint right so that's what i would say uh, from a from a view from a investment viewpoint that please do not believe in the narrative that uh, you can invest in an asset where you are making 200% return or have the potential to make 200% return but it should be safe like bonds it can't be right so i mean that is common sensical i don't know what else to say to that now comes uh, the vault issue now see guys i mean i have already done a separate live on vault i have taken all your questions i have explained my stand also just to give you a little bit of more commentary about vault uh, number one uh, they are communicating with all of you right uh, i'm hoping and I'm, I'm also getting in investor email uh, investor in the sense that i'm putting money in because i've put in money so we are creditors that's what they are term terming us so from that viewpoint you are also getting the court proceeding details you can join right so that's one second key point please understand the difference between a business that is a scam versus a business that is having trouble right so it's not as if that world is running away it's not like vijay mallya type of a situation right that he did some shady stuff ran away all that stuff that is not happening they are communicating with you if people do wrong and they do not want to face that means that there is something to hide right world is doing it the best they can from that perspective now comes a very interesting narrative that i have been um, hearing about us that you know uh, at the back end how can some company give like 15% uh, 12.68% uh, return on assets i'm not trying to defend but i'm just trying to help you understand and i'm not speaking in this about this on a world's context i'm speaking about it from a defi context okay for people who want to listen please listen to this part otherwise you know i mean there's a, 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 a no matter what i said it would not make sense so i'll at least help you understand the context because this is like a very negative narrative that is being woven uh, so i will say two points here one is that please understand something called as s curve adoption so s curve adoption simply means that every new technology or anything that is new anything that is powerful it will go through a series or a it will go through a certain adoption curve so to say okay so anything new right be it zomato be it paytm be it Uh, uh internet as a technology be it uh, google glasses for example right so all these go through an s curve right now you know when an s curve is starting but you don't know when it will get completed okay so that is the first key thing right um so that's what i would say guys so please do not unnecessarily spread hate right uh, you will be blocked right there is no other way that i can say this more calmly than that right uh, i'm here taking all the questions please do not unnecessarily like you know start thrashing people uh, no one likes to be you know so anyways coming back to the topic okay so yeah so that's point one okay um okay so second key point is that see guys i'll not take the name of the platform what's the point of me doing it that hey where i'm investing please figure out right i mean everyone is responsible uh, from that perspective right uh, uh, take my data points as research i've been saying it over and over again i even made it up uh, but anyways let me first go and complete the second point then i'll come to this point so first key point is that cryptos are going through an s curve adoption it is an 100x opportunity either it will go to 100x or it will go to zero there is no middle path here that's a simple view point okay that's one it's risky no doubt about that right second key point is that uh, do i believe in cryptos yes i do believe in cryptos why do and what needs to happen for the cryptos to be successful a series of different things need to be successful and one of those areas is called as defi or decentralized finance under which all the companies that are and defi is what it is like banking right so for example when we uh, go to a bank uh, for example if i talk about that hey how does the economy function you will say that the economy functions because of flow of credit who manages that flow of credit it's the banks that manage the flow of credit now something similar also happens in the crypto world that the flow of credit of cryptos need to be managed by defi platform so to say okay so that is the simplest correlation that i can give between the two is is exactly the same the answer is no okay so that's point 2 uh, now 
the narrative that i wanted to explain was very simple that the uh, uh, entire viewpoint is being built that hey you know what uh, how can some crypto lending platforms give like 2.12.6% 6 12.68% so they are not giving 12.68 on every single coin they are giving 12.68 on stable coins that's point 1 point 2 if you go to something like bitcoin then every platform is giving different different rates this has to do with defi on defi the loans are over collateralized now why did that over collateralization did not work now i'll speak things which you will have to go and research further i cannot explain it verbally but i'm trying my level best so from that perspective what happens is so think about it this way right that um what do you think is the loan rate that you get when you go and try to buy a car right so you and i would be getting like a home loan rate or a car loan rate maybe like let's say 10% okay now if you go to a small finance bank or if a villager goes to a small finance bank to start a business or take a any type of loan what rate do they get they get 15% 20% sometimes why because of the risk associated with that credit right so therefore please don't go by simple numbers that hey, you know 15% 20% versus 10% so that is what the defi space is it is supposed to be over collateralized why did the over collateralization did not work for that please go and watch my video on stable coins that i had done where i have spoken about the fact that how is what is usdt usdc some people started confusing usdt with uh, uh with ust right so please verify all these things right and that is the reason why i'm not uh you know getting into that right so that's one right okay so now uh, talking about the world issue and wrapping it up right that see guys uh world is already communicating with everyone they are in talks they are being acquired by nexo that process will take time if it were a defunct company if it was doing shady stuff why would another lender go and acquire it it does not make any sense right so from that perspective so let's wait and watch there is uh there is not much what we can do from that point of view okay so all right so in recap uh, i am still very much bullish about yeah so i am still very much bullish about cryptos i am very much bullish about stock markets i am still a diversified investor the way i had always been right uh, so yeah so that's what i would say uh, some good sectors to consider right or uh, research more into would be auto pharma uh, banks right these are good these are um these are sort of amping up at this stage you should be slightly more careful about fmcg investing on fmcg now uh, it not sure it's a very company specific game right so that's what i would say okay all right so uh, cool so i will take some questions and we will pick it up from there okay so da 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 so again guys i mean see when it comes to ui path coin base um shopify when it comes to uh, plantier right so all these companies are 0 to 1 to 100x companies if this now if you are taking making vc bets right then you will then these bets will either become 100x and or they will go to zero right out of 10 such companies that you will invest five of them should go to zero so to say right why because then otherwise you will be making like a 500% return so let's work through an example right so think about it this way that if you are picking these zero 1 to 100x type of companies which are small which are very volatile type of companies and if you invest let's say 1 1 rupee in every company hypothetically speaking in 10 companies right now even if two survive then what is the ret your return and they become 100x it will be 200x eight go to zero then what is the total profit you make you make 200 minus 8 which is 192 so your profit profit becomes 192 by investing how much rupee by investing 10 rupee so please understand that basic mathematical equation that is all i can simply say okay so yeah. all right so do you believe in believe in world's nexo acquisition thing now i don't know what is meant by uh, believing in it so guys i have never said that i am an investor in world or i get some personal privileged information etc etc it is impossible again right i mean all these platforms they are in talk they don't give us any privileged information to us whatever uh, commentary that i have given it is right there in public you can go and check every single post that i have done on it, it uh, all that information is still there right so, uh but yeah that's a good move because nexo again is a uh, you know in this market if they are as a defi platform it is if it is going and acquiring companies uh, which shows like i mean they are believing in that model they uh, do see it working and we need the defi space for cryptos to be successful that's plain and simple cryptos cannot survive without defi players being into the equation that's how it works right it's like saying that financial systems can survive without banks being there 
what do you think about fed recession crude rbi monetary policy global inflation and how long will the rally continue now i don't know how long will the rally continue but i there is no reason why a new peak should not be made in the nifty okay okay uh, i am not going to suggest anything um, you guys are smart you can figure out which platforms to buy stuff from right uh bulk buying or can still wait so i will say that please do not bulk buy let the markets consolidate that would be the time for bulk buy. okay right so uh folks we'll end the chat in like another 15 minutes so i'll take questions for 15 minutes right and then we will pick it up tanla platforms i don't know i have not done any analysis on tanla but i have heard a lot from you people so i will probably go and uh, research hdfc amc i have been bullish i have been bullish about the company uh, for a long time right i do not believe in the argument that the space is oversaturated etc it's a highly sentimental market right when money returns to the stock market investors in india are going to do it via amc platforms only and there is enough space for this market to grow with time right so okay uh, au small finance bank is good uh, there is no problem with au small finance deepak nitrite i won't comment right i feel that it might be a little bit overvalued right so even still right? okay tata motors uh, not bullish right i am not bullish about ev space as i have been saying um, a lot right as of now because see uh, so uh, there was a mckinsey study that was done and basically what they talked about was and this mckinsey study if i'm not mistaken it was done on in 2018 19 okay now what happened at this mckinsey study was that they gave an estimate that if you look at conventional automobiles and ev sector uh, vehicles four wheelers right then there is a cost difference of 10000 us dollars so 10000 us dollars roughly is like 7 and a half 8 lakh rupees so in a price sensitive country like india that will not work that's point one so unless the pricing point of conventional automobiles and four wheelers march it's not going to work out right india is a highly price sensitive market so it's highly unlikely that unless unless the price point start making sense ev would be purchased in bulk in a country like india and yeah so that's what i would say and therefore i'm not too bullish about ev because it's a research problem it's not a company problem that tata motor is doing something wrong or maruti is not doing something right and all that stuff okay okay um mohit asked me that hey akshat uh, did you have a look at the hawkins copper stock requested in the last live session okay so i will definitely make a video on that mohit but see consumer durables right now um, is good it should rebound right so overall if you are picking good companies in this sector that is a good sector to think about i would say that that's i'll have to double check the stock right i mean i cannot comment too much on the stock per se uh, but consumer durables as an industry right now it should rebound that's my perspective on it right opinion on china's real estate there is no china real estate problem guys i mean you know because uh, think about it this way that uh, defaults for banks in china will not happen because chinese debt is mostly domesticated debt so that should be okay they should be able to handle the situation okay uh um, mohit i have answered uh babita thank you okay um ba 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 netflix is an overvalued stock to be honest i see netflix is not a bad stock right netflix is a very good stock uh, it's just that 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 company itself is going through a uh, innovation spree as of now and they might might not and the problem with netflix is that they they have already gotten the premium prices okay so that's the problem right that without the model being workable or like model being successful uh, they have already commanded the premium valuation and people have invested and lost money in it so therefore it's a problem okay uh, ethereum merge i'll make a separate video can you make a video on profit booking like when to sell a stock and how much to sell okay i will try doing it but i have i am selling some of my stocks in this rally i'm i'm being disclosing it to everyone i again see guys i mean you know the amount of negative commentary that people end up getting see people can be wrong for example i sold itc right and people just as you you know people start like you know giving unnecessary thoughts that you know what you sold itc itc gave a run up okay so when i sold itc does it mean that i sold that kept that money under my pillow the answer is no i reinvested that into something else right so please think about it that way right um, uh, yeah so that's what i would say right but what ends up happening is that it becomes very difficult to give like concrete calls and even i have started avoiding that altogether right i mean i would rather 
uh, play it safe right and i i genuinely like you know want to share everything that i know but it becomes a problem right to be transparent with people because you just end up getting like so much negativity right so yeah so that becomes a problem pnb i am bullish right again not an advice that you should go not go invest now i feel that it's a, it's a it's a good value buy right apple india i don't know uh, okay uh, thank you procter and gamble uh, see i i would not i personally would not invest as of now because uh, i feel that fmcg sector rotation is complete at this stage so it should not right bajaj finance at this stage i don't know enough uh, difficult to say uh, bajaj finance a while back was very good right idfc first bank is a very good right i mean i am bullish about it but again it's a slightly risky bank if you want to invest in like safer banks even hdfc is very good even now it is fine okay so yeah from that angle but you have to have like little bit of faith because see guys what is happening with banks is that for the last uh, two three years they have not given a major run up right so that's the problem right so yeah steel companies please do not invest too much right at this stage it would be it would not be very useful okay so okay uh, any more questions da, 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 da. please talk about indian it sector in fi hcl wipro so i feel that uh, you know when it comes to tcs tcs is a good stock in fi is a good stock there is no problem i think that and this is my belief right that there will be little bit of a rally right maybe like 10% rally more right in these stocks just because of the exchange rate benefits that these companies are going to get at least for the next two quarters right even without changing the business model so i feel that there is a safe money to be made from that angle again not an investment advice per se please do more analysis on it uh, but i will take like highly concentrated bets right i will probably bet on like top two players in it if at all right so tcs i am a buyer at this stage right but i am not aggregating anything else okay uh, how's life in goa i'm a huge believer when you suggested i invested in vinyl india now it's up question is should i hold or exit so babita you should know how to book profits sensibly you should book profits right um, um it's not as so for example what i would generally like not an advice but uh, you know it really depends from person to person but what i would say is that um, for example let's say that um, your goal should be to at least book some profit so that you get more cushion to stay in the market longer so even on good stocks book a little bit of profit because it gives you room to not panic right when the situation turns ugly right so if you are up 35% and if you feel that the technicals tell you that hey okay you should not be uh, that you should be selling then sell a little bit of that stock even if you are a believer in it if you are not a believer in it sell it off completely okay just to give you an example for example when i sold um when i sold itc i rotated that money mostly into something like tcs right why because and and tcs also has given like i mean i must have sold itc at like i can't recall maybe like 280 ish around and then tcs has also given like 4 5% run up from that stage right so it's like good that's how you should be booking profits and rotating it to better stocks thank you i mean thank you uh, manish uh, just a question about hdfc life fundamentals not looking good from couple of years no so manish uh, hdfc life fundamental will not look good post 2020 especially the profits because there were a lot of claims that they settled a lot of um um what's the right word i'm forgetting the right word here so um, they settled like lot of um, a uh, lot of claims right in 2020 because of the covid situation and those were like sort of one time claims you can say right it's, it's not as if that covid like situation will keep on happening every 2 3 years and companies like hdfc life will go out of business uh, so from that angle right i mean you need to analyze the last 2 years numbers from that perspective yeah, so, but otherwise hdfc life is a very good company okay uh, hul and bajaj finance uh rally still left um hul i don't think so it's almost at its all time high that's point a point 2 is that please do not buy hul when it is peaking buy hul when it is falling so it's a stock that you should be aggregating on fall for example right now um, you know if i were to look at hul from a short term perspective i would just simply book profits and move away 
but if you are a believer in a hul type of a company which i am then i continue to hold it irrespective i keep on aggregating and buying more and more of hul whenever the opportunity presents itself right so that is how i have built a huge position in hul hdfc bank also uh, asian paints also right so these are like sensible companies that you should buy at good prices right and same i would say even in the us that there are so many good stocks in the us right now at deeply discounted prices which you could consider right from that perspective right which ones i will not say right please go and do some work from that angle but yeah okay sbi cards um, see cards business is also evolving right so it would be too early for us to talk about it because bajaj finance hdfc all are um, coming into this business uh, but yeah tough tough to say because it's an evolving industry if you have to bet on an evolving industry then probably like it's better to bet bet on a slightly more bigger dimension of it for example rather than betting on just the cards business bank on the entire bank right for example hdfc or idfc first right from that angle okay um stocks which are at good which are good i do not understand the question transport sector uh i don't know i it, it's a low margin sector so what so there is very uh, very um, there is no not much benefit in terms of going to low margin sectors it will not lead to a lot of uh, lot of it does not make a lot of sense for retail investors to get there right so, yeah. um okay so jp power business jp power is good it's a good swing stock right so, yeah. Wipro again very similar, uh, right? Uh, there is no problem with Wipro, right? Uh, Dabur is good, uh, but the point with Dabur is that it is not. Um, it is again in FMCG, and I personally feel, and I can be completely off that uh, sector money will be rotated out of FMCG right now because a lot of FMCG has peaked, right? Okay, or at least they will not give like massive run up, right? So. Uh, okay, so we'll guys will end in like five minutes, right? So okay, uh, your views on Dabur have already uh, okay. Amra Raja, I've already talked about um, IRCTC. I'm not bullish. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, uh, I'll be bullish about like small cap, mid cap, but that is high risk investing. So again, unfortunately, I want to make videos on that, but again. You know why stick our neck out, right? So to say, I'm being blunt with you, right? So I mean, it's just like when positive sentiments return, you get a lot of praise, right? When positive sentiments, so today, like you know, a very interesting thing that I uh, said something on Twitter, right? That hey, you know what? Now, okay, fine. Of course, you will be making profit because the markets are going up. But folks, when everyone was scared, I was buying, and I showed you live investments, what not, right? At the time when everyone was panicking, the fear was at its peak because that is precisely how markets work. You are not, you are not supposed. No one was supposed to make profits four or five months ago, right? Now, if you would have purchased that money, so uh, mar markets fell up to like what fourteen thousand five hundred ish, fourteen around fifteen ish, right? So if that point you would have invested right now, you would be sitting on like good uh, two by fifteen. How much, right? So good fifteen sixteen percent profit on everything that you would have invested, right? So yeah. Avani shares, I'm not a buyer. Uh, okay, Nazra, no, I'm not investing. Uh, I'm not investing. That does not mean that it is bad. REITs, I'm not a believer. Right? Uh, I've already explained because it's a commissions-oriented business. So, real estate is very hard to generate returns from unless you own own it holistically. Right? So that's the point. Okay. India Bulls Housing Finance. Uh, it's a swing stock, but it will take time. Right? So if you have the uh, patience to hold it, then please hold it, right? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'll probably see, right? I mean, depending on the market circumstances, I feel that I I purchased like a small cap, which was very good. Right? No, I'm not booking profits on HUL, uh, um, Imran. Uh, not doing it. Right? So, but yeah, it is very likely that it will fall, right? So I'm also putting that out from that perspective. Okay, on crypto, how do the portfolio? How to do portfolio? How to evaluate projects? Uh, dollar cost averaging? Yes, dollar cost averaging. Yes, I've been doing it myself, and I've been doing it for a long time. Um, number two, uh, what projects you should be investing? It depends on your narrative. If you what your perspective is, you should not go and analyze all the crypto coins. You should probably pick five, six coins that you are interested in, and yeah, and take positions accordingly. Right. Uh, Ethereum classic investment. Okay. 
होल्डिंग कंपनी राइट नाउ फॉर डिफरेंट other set of companies so if you want that portfolio exposure it makes sense but otherwise there is no point in buying something like infoedge right because they are not directly experimenting with technologies per se right okay uh, ha, 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 ha. Okay, cool. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the session, guys. Uh, so we'll wrap it up. Otherwise, the uh, the conversation becomes really long. But I hope you enjoyed the session. Right? I tried to disclose things as transparently as I could. Uh, yeah, we'll keep on making more videos. And um, let me know if you would want me to make like specific videos on specific topics. Do comment and let me know. I do read through all your comments and really appreciate. Right? I mean, I I know. Uh, that uh, the last four or five months have been tough for everyone in the stock market, crypto market, any kind of investing, right? It has not given returns, and many of you have been new to the market, right? So it's a learning exercise. But please do remember that when everyone is extremely fearful to invest, and if you invest during that time, that is when you will make the most money, right? So yeah, so don't be scared, or and always believe in like one fundamental fact that Nifty always cuts its previous peak, right? So that is the that is a very simple. Uh, barometric which you can use in order to consider whether you should be making investments not making investments and be a little bit patient about it because sometimes what happens is that the stocks do not give any returns for 3 4 months and then suddenly one day they will give like 15 20% returns also right so yeah so please keep that in mind and i hope you enjoyed the session right and i will see you soon